Houston, we have yet another partial differential equation, and this time we have a little spin on the heat equation that I find quite interesting. So normally you have this derivative of u with respect to t term where u would be the temperature function, and then you have the second derivative of u with respect to x, which is actually a diffusion term, and you would have these two equated to each other Another constant would be involved, which depends on the thermal properties of the material. You would separate variables and bingo, you have the solution. However, in this case, we have this extra beta times u term where beta I must specify is a positive real number. So what exactly or how exactly do we interpret this? Well, if I isolate the partial u over partial t term, then I have this equal to partial square u over partial x squared minus beta times u. So this would represent a heat loss term. For example, if I have some kind of rod, then this extra beta times u term represents some kind of lateral heat loss that is taking place. And just for the purpose of this problem, to make our lives easier, I'm gonna assume some really straightforward boundary conditions so let's say that the ends of the rod, u of 0 at any time t and u of 1 at any time t, are both maintained at 0 temperature. And the initial profile, u of x and 0, would be any function f of x that is nice and continuous. Okay, cool. So how exactly do we solve the heat equation in this form? Well, an intuitive buildup of the solution could be neglecting the diffusion term, as in let me try and study the effect of this lateral heat loss term in isolation. And I think it's more or less obvious what it would result in, but still let me just evaluate it out here explicitly. So partial u over partial t equal to negative, and what is wrong with my pen? Ah, much better. So partial u over partial t would equal negative beta times u, but this is of course just an exponential function. So in this case, with no diffusion term, our u of x and t is equal to e to the minus beta times t times some constant a that's actually gonna be a function of x. Okay, cool. So the lateral heat loss term is represented by this exponential term, this damping factor, if you may call it. So it may be reasonable to build on this by saying that our actual solution u of xt could be this damping factor times another function w of x and t that is sort of separated from this lateral heat loss. Okay, cool. And this kind of simplifies, this really does simplify our work quite a bit because now if I differentiate first with respect to time, in that case, I have e to the minus beta t times partial w over partial t minus beta times e to the negative beta t times w of x and t. So this sorts out to e to the minus beta t times partial w over partial t minus, this term is once again our assumed temperature function or the form of the temperature function. So that is beta times u. So that is the left hand side, the right hand side that is, and that's the time that's actually the time derivative on both sides of the equation. Anyway, what would be the second derivative with respect to x? Well, partial squared u over partial x squared would equal e to the minus beta t times partial squared w over partial x squared. So now if I insert these terms back into our heat equation, then we get on the left-hand side the derivative, the time derivative, sorts out to e to the minus beta t, terribly sorry about that, times partial w over partial t minus beta u. And recall on the right-hand side, we had this diffusion term, 
partial square root w over partial x squared minus the beta times u term again. So there's cancellation. And of course, there would be cancellation of e to the minus beta t. That term is non-zero, so expand using its inverse. And you have partial w, terribly sorry about that, over partial t equal to partial square w over partial x squared, which is quite convenient because this is just the heat equation without any other exogenous terms like the lateral heat loss term that we were considering. So all we need to do is solve this equation for w and then plug it back in here and then we're good to go. Now, of course, we need to translate the boundary conditions. So recall that u of 0 t is equal to 0, but this implies that e to the minus beta t, terribly sorry about that, times w of 0 t is equal to 0. And again, because the exponential term is non-zero, this implies that w of 0 t would be 0. And by similar token, we have w of 1 and t being equal to 0. And of course, for the initial profile, u of x 0 being equal to f of x, plug in t equal to 0, and the exponential term is just a 1. So that is w of x and 0. So we have some straightforward Dirichlet type boundary conditions, which evaluate to a Fourier sine series, which I have evaluated in the previous video on partial differential equations. That was, what is that sound? Uh, there's some, uh, just some construction material being moved about. Anyway, what on earth was I talking about? Oh yeah. So in the previous video on partial differential equations, I think that was the nonlinear equation that is actually the viscous Berger's or Berger's equation. So we reduced that to a heat equation and then solved it. So you can check out that video if you're unfamiliar with how to solve a partial differential equation of this sort, which you may think would be unlikely if you know how to solve partial differential equations. I mean, why would you be watching a video? Well. What's math YouTube for? Math YouTube is specifically for looking up videos on advanced math that you do not know. So do check out the video. And here I'm just going to write out the solution that for such boundary conditions, that is to say Dirichlet type boundary conditions, your heat equation solves out to W of X and T being equal to the sum over K from 1 to infinity of a sub k times e to the minus n squared pi squared t multiplied by what exactly? Oh yeah, sine terms. So sine of k pi x. And of course to determine these a sub k's we can make use of the orthogonality of sine functions. And this implies that each a sub k is actually equal to the integral from 0 to pi in this case. No, wait, it's 0 to 1, the length of the rod. So this is supposed to equal twice the integral. I really should have wrote this out on my notes instead of saying trivial because I always forget this. Anyway, so this thing equals the function w of x at 0 which is of course equal to our f of x times the sine of k pi x dx. Okay, cool. And of course, to convert back into our u solution, recall that u here is just the damping factor times w. So that means we are left with the sum over k from one to infinity of a sub k times e to the minus n squared pi squared t times e to the negative beta times t. So I could factor something out here. So we have e to the minus t times, what exactly? Oh yeah, beta plus n squared pi squared, which looks dope, times the sine of k pi x. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what solves our modified heat equation. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.